Hi everyone and welcome to chapter 2 of my Witcher 3 Wild Hunt walkthrough. Uh, this is uh, immediately after leaving White Orchard I'm going to follow the quest of finding uh, first this ancient Hendrik and what follows is a battle with some dogs which I said I wasn't going to skip any battles so here we go and after this is probably the entirety of the quest of uh, uh, wandering in the dark the quest, the quest that we go with uh, Kira uh, the entire time and in the end we fight uh, uh, I guess a member of the of the wild hunt a sort of boss which is going to be in an in a individual video uh, just because this ended up being 30 minutes and the boss took me 10 uh, some things to mention uh, at the moment of, of, of the quest the entire quest of wandering in the dark I did it uh, at level 3 so if you think that's why if you think well why did it took so, ma so many time to defeat an uh well that's why because I'm doing shit damage and I'm doing a, a quest line that's supposed to be uh, recommended for level 6 and I'm doing it at level 3 I go to level 4 when I finish the quest so in chapter 3 I guess uh, whatever quest I choose to follow which I'm possibly sure that is going to be the the crowns of Crook uh, Backpog but uh, it's going to be on level 4 so this is definitely going to be a challenge I mean uh, I died several times in this in these fights more because of being careless that actual difficulty uh, what took me really several tries is like uh, the, the, the place uh, that's in, the in this video almost uh, close to, to neutral when you have to uh, close three portals of the well hunt and dogs comes out of it because the dogs were hitting me really really hard and you're gonna see it uh, in the edit video so here we're killing just some drowners these are the first drowners that I kill officially in the in the game on this walkthrough because I just uh, remember what I say in the first part that I, I don't I'm not gonna do side quests I'm not gonna do contracts I'm not even gonna stop uh, while traveling on horse or fast traveling or whatever I'm not even gonna stop uh, murdering uh, random enemies I'm just gonna do the main quest so this as, as I was saying this is going to be very very challenging more so than I anticipated, uh, anticipated before so these are more drowners we are uh, this entire video is almost uh, wandering in the dark quest this is the moments when we get separated but I'm not gonna comment uh, a lot because that would be spoilers so uh, to change in associate because I, I don't really have to comment about these battles you just have to learn to dodge the attacks if you're gonna do something like this like coming on the level and I guess you could block too, but I'm not so eager to block. As you can see, I'm always touching, and this is this is like uh, the way for me to get good at the game. Uh, I prefer to to dodge instead of block because if I can, if I don't rely on block, uh, I, I just get better at the game. It's, it's my way. It's my train of thought. So. So, uh, to talk about something else or, or recent news, uh, I was watching the. First of all, Chris Avalon left Obsidian, which is kind of a surprise for me. I mean, uh, uh, the guy who wrote Pillars of Eternity, if you're wondering who is he, of, of course, he, the guy has a history of on Black Eyes, like is Black Easel, excuse me. And well, I'm not gonna go over the the history with Chris, but uh, 
uh, he wrote a lot of the dialogue in, in Pillars of Eternity, which is mostly the best part of the game. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I once said I was going to do Pillars of Eternity on the channel, but then I realized something that I kinda realized about this game too. It, it has so much fucking dialogue, the game, and I'm not saying that as a bad thing, so don't take it as a bad thing. Uh, but it, it has so many dialogue that there's no way possible that I could, that I could do a, a playthrough or or a walkthrough even. It will be so many hours inside a walkthrough that I will have to launch the walkthrough and just keep it going for a full year maybe. And, and half of it will be just reading dialogue and, and, and I have fun reading dialogue and, and I have fun uh, with all the quests and, and the writing, uh, don't get me wrong, it's, it's incredible, it's, it's a really really good game and an awesome dialogue and and, and uh, questing and, and side quests and the story, but it just I don't know how I will fit it and keep it interesting in the channel, so that's why I decided not to include it, but uh, by god if you like RPGs just go buy Players of Eternity because it's fucking amazing. So I, I'm fighting a water hug now. This is kind of difficult because the water hug is level seven, and you see, you saw how much damage she took with one hit. So look at the damage I'm doing. So I'm I, I, I'm still using the first sword, the silver sword that you start with, because the game haven't hasn't, hasn't given me uh, a replacement yet. So yeah, that's the kind of limitations that this uh, walkthrough is going to have. Just main quest stuff, or things that I found in the main quest. So yeah, uh, so the other thing that I read about uh, was uh, uh, the... First of all, uh, they announced Dark Souls 3. They, they didn't announce Dark Souls 3, but the rumors are pretty, pretty huge that it's going to fe be featured even with gameplay at E3. So I, I'm kind of excited about it because I, 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 I never thought that I will be seeing. Uh, I mean, I thought I would be seeing the f footage of the DLC of Bloodborne that supposedly is going to come out sometime this year but I never thought I was going to be s seeing or gameplay already of Dark Souls 3 I mean it's it's too fucking early and and, and the rumors are that uh, Mishasaki is working on the project as well but there are all rumors but the, the screenshots really speak for themselves I mean the game really looked like a Dark Souls 3 so I don't think that's a hoax or something like that, I mean, I think it's real. And that kinda... Uh, I'm happy about the news, but it's kinda weird, because it gives me a feeling that they're doing... S I, I don't wanna exaggerate, but the feeling is that it's too fucking soon, I mean, I realize that the game is even... S it's even uh, rumored to be uh, for early to t 2016, I mean next year. And that is fucking impossible, I mean... If we are going to expect that Dark Souls 3... We are going to be playing Dark Souls 3 at late next year, at most, or early to, to 2017. I don't think they can, they can really achieve early next year. But. I mean, if they can and the game is is good, if it's not rushed, because we all know that all the Dark Souls games and even Demon Souls all uh, were rushed and suffered for, for it, all of them. So I'm kind of sick and tired of rushed games, but it seems like uh, what I was going to say is I, I don't want uh, Dark Souls to become a kind of Call of Duty franchise. I mean, something that we're gonna see every year, or, or every two years. I mean, uh, Dark Souls 4 and in 2018, uh, 
announce for 2019 I mean I, I don't, what what is going on or, or maybe Bloodborne 2 I don't know maybe they are already doing Bloodborne 2 uh, I, I don't get this I, I don't get this uh, announcements so soon I mean we just got Bloodborne and you might say well, it's Dark Souls 3 dude I mean is this, what, what, what do you want? I mean, do you want to wait four years for the next Dark Souls? No, I, I don't want to wait four years for any game. Uh, uh, it's just, it's just kind of looking at my life, uh, beating my heart away <laughs> with, while waiting for these uh, cool games like The Witcher. Because when you realize that you finished Witcher 3, you realize that this is. It's the same feeling that when you when you finish a Dark Souls, at least for me, and and for people who like uh, other games as well, you realize that games that have been in the making for so many years, you're just not gonna see anything like it in in in, in a whole lot of, of years. I mean, maybe four, maybe five. I mean, how long uh, how long uh, I waited for another Deus Ex since the first Deus Ex? And we are not even counting Invisible War because we are not going to talk about that game. And then we got the Human Revolution, but it was like more than 10 years later. It was literally more than 10 years later of, of waiting for a game that was rumored and cancelled and rumored and just rumored. And Square Enix did a great job with Human uh, Revolution, and then they're, now they're gonna show gameplay at the tree with uh, Mankind Divided. So I'm, I'm really happy for that. But you see, this that's not that's not rushing it, because Human Revolution uh, came out in 2013, I think, or 2012. So it's not really rushing. I guess uh, they, where they ended with the game, they just uh, started or or started uh, making Mankind Divided. So that's one thing, uh, but I, I I don't know. I just don't want Dark Souls to become uh, the Call of Duty of Bandai Namco. That I don't want that. I don't. I, I want uh, if it's, if he it has to take more than a year or or, or two years to make uh, a lasting e expression. Ex expression? What the fuck am I saying? Impression, like Dark Souls One did on me, or Demon Souls did. Then I prefer that that a rush uh, game like I don't know Dark Souls Two maybe. That is just a fucking mess. I mean, it's go it's a good game. Don't don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I did so much fucking videos on Dark Souls Two that I, I can now be saying that it's a bad game. Not at all. It's a good game, but uh, it just doesn't come anywhere near Dark Souls or Demon Souls. So, I guess I, I don't want uh, rehash shit with the mechanics of a Dark Souls, but that it doesn't that it doesn't reinvent it himself. But, uh, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, look at The Witcher. Uh, we have Witcher One. We had a clunky and really bad uh, battle system, uh, but excellent story and quests and dialogue and excellent every everything else, right? Then we had the evolution, much better graphics with The Witcher 2, much better uh, battle mechanics, even if you say that the battle becomes you were kind of Dark Soulsy or maybe too much too, too much uh, action based than was in Witcher 1. Well, I think it, it was still a much better battle uh, mechanics than uh, Witcher 1, which were kind of boring. Uh, so that was that was better. Immediately the graphics a lot better. And uh, the story was kind of good. Not as good as Witcher 1, I would say, in personal opinion. But uh, the story was good. The, the the decisions that you make in the game and whatever they were all good and and now look at Witcher 3 is oh, is an open world game and I may even venture to say that it's the best open world game out there why I say this 
this kind of is like a review because I'm taking too long to kill like this fucking golem. Uh, I think this is the best open world game because it because you care about the things that you're doing. And this is what uh, the people at Bethesda don't seem to get. And I know I might get crit criticism for saying this. I'm not really that uh, hyped for Fallout 4. I'm not. I'm not because I didn't like Fallout 3. I did like, however, Fallout New Vegas. But uh, that was made by Obsidian, including Chris Abelion. So that had a good story, good side quest. He had bad one too, but he had a much better system. And even a hardcore game mode uh, was incredible. A uh, really fun mode. So, uh, I don't know. I'm not uh, expecting a good game. I'm expecting a Skyrim uh, like game. Uh, side quests that are boring. And I just. Why, why I say that Witcher 3 uh, Wild Hunt is a, the best open world? Because every fucking side quest, every fucking contract, all the characters that you meet, all the things that you're doing, even if it is uh, fucking uh, a side quest that lasts like five minutes, is is fucking scripted like if it were the, the main story of the game. I mean, so many good stories on the side quests and the contracts. Everything is so so is so much attention to every detail that you that you care that you care about all the characters you care about even the characters that you maybe make a decision and, and, and they end up in bad shape I mean I, I don't want to spoil anything but you care about finding Siri you care about finding Jennifer at the beginning uh, you care about uh, uh, I thought uh, when it was announced that we were going to play a Siri, I thought it was going to be like a disconnect. I didn't really like the idea because I thought it was better just to play as uh, Geralt all the time. But they even did that good. They even did that uh, likable. Because Siri doesn't have the same uh, mechanics as Geralt. That's exactly how you need to do it. I'm not gonna comment more on that because it's kind of spoilers, but they even made it that good and and you care about Siri and, and her story because it's, it's kinda her story so how do you do an open world that connects with you well you have to have uh, good writing that's it good writing good quests and uh, characters that you can uh, care you care about. I mean, as I, as I said in another video, I don't remember which one, uh, I didn't give a fuck about being the Dragonborn in Skyrim. I didn't give a fuck about being the Dragonborn, about killing the dragons, about all the side quests, about becoming the Archmage of the Magic School that no one gives a fuck about when you actually are... I didn't give a fuck uh, about uh, all the side characters that they are never really important <sighs> I don't know it's just so fucking boring I mean it's, it's fun for the first 10 hours maybe because you are discovering shit but then you have like 50 more hours that is just bad boring and I'm sure there are a lot of people that like Skyrim and Bo Oblivion but I'm more. I, I tend to to go more for Morrowind, like the last Elder Scrolls that are good, and that's why I don't expect Fallout 4 as much as so many people are, are expecting Fallout 4. And I think the people that are really uh, expecting Fallout 4 are people that never played Fallout 1 or 2, the old ones. Are people that the first uh, Fallout that they played was 3, so. The, it was a good game for them because it's not a bad game in itself but it's just so fucking boring again I mean Fallout New Vegas is so much better and just because it's, it's, it has better quest, better story, better writing, better characters I mean how much can you do in that universe? 
without starting to repeat yourself. I don't know. I just don't expect. I'm sorry if I'm going to make noises. I, I, I realize that the noises that I do with the mic are a thing. I'm in the process of uh, getting a new mic. And I'm sorry, guys, for the noises that I can make. It's the fucking microphone. And I can't do anything about it now, but I'm going to get a really good microphone soon. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's why I'm not really that uh, that thrilled uh, about Fallout 4. And that was a long, uh, that was kind of a long review of this game. So yeah, do I think this is the best game of the year? This is, mm, I don't know. Uh, I could say yes. The thing is, uh, I don't think Batman is going to be the best game of the years by no by no means. But we still have a way to go, and I really love the Bloodborne. I really enjoyed Bloodborne, and I'm, I'm still playing it because I, if you notice or didn't notice, I didn't upload the the real uh, last boss of the game, or at least for me, it's the real last boss of the game, which is the Queen Yarnam. And I'm still in the process of making it to the Queen Yarnam. It's just that I haven't, I haven't been playing it that much because Witcher 3 came out and I just focus on this. But uh, I played a whole lot of Bloodborne. It's a fucking incredible game. I don't know if I can say that Witcher 3 is better than Bloodborne. It's definitely it's different. I mean, they're different games. But I don't know if I can, I mean, in my personal opinion, say that Bloodborne is better than The Witcher. I think I enjoyed more, and you're gonna go crazy when I say this, but I, I think I, I enjoyed more Bloodborne than The Witcher. And the sole purpose of that opinion is because all the content in the Bloodborne was new. I mean, in w w why do I mean by that? I mean, there are some th some things that I came to expect when playing Witcher 3. And even imagine as some of the feeling of the game is what's going to be. I mean, open world and, and the mechanics of the open world. And Bloodborne is a linear game. A linear game, sorry. And it's just... It's just different. I, I kind of enjoy more uh, a linear, a good linear game than an open world game. That doesn't mean that uh, Witcher 3 is a, is a bad game. It's fucking incredible. But I think I enjoy more Bloodborne than, than Witcher 3. Slight, slightly more. Now we are at the scene that I commented before. This is the most difficult uh, part of the game uh, up until this uh, moment that I'm playing in this quest. Because the dog just hit really hard and I hit really low. And get out, even you see, I get out of the bubble accidentally because get out, and I know not, uh, I don't want to uh, target the enemies because then I just attack one enemy and the dogs just get out of the bubble. So I'm trying to stay in the bubble, but you see what is happening? The, the dogs get out of the bubble. So I'm, I'm not targeting them, but the thing with not targeting is that Geralt will change, uh, sometimes change uh, the target by itself, or you move, you you just move the camera slight, slightly, and and Geralt just targeting a new enemy that's outside the bubble, and I immediately jump to that enemy, and o other enemy uh, hits me from behind, like, like. An enemy that I was aware that was there, but I had no way of, of getting out of the of the kind of lock enemy that I had at that moment. So it's kind of messy. Uh, the battle system, I guess, the battle system is good, much better than uh, Witcher 2, but it gets repetitive. It gets really repetitive, and it's kind of. It gets kind of 
it gets kind of old by but by the time you are doing uh, your uh, end of the game which is probably going to be an average of 90 80 hours it really gets up some some uh, it, really, it really gets old I think that's that's the the only bad thing that I can say about this game and also the horse the fucking roach oh my god it's fucking nuisance why no one can make a fucking horse work right in an open world game I mean it's nowhere near the fucking insanity that went on in Skyrim with the horse that could climb mountains I mean not at all but it's just that uh, sometimes I call him and he gets stuck in geometry uh, once he got inside a house and I had to move away get him off screen to be able to call him again sometimes I call him and he kinda comes near but I have to like run because it just stopped coming I, I don't know the horse is kinda clunky so the horse and the battle system when you have played a lot of it I guess are the only two bad things about this game and if I had to say something bad about Bloodborne I will have to say that the multiplayer is lacking and I realize that this game has no multiplayer multiplayer, and that's not a bad thing that's a good thing but uh, Bloodborne's multiplayer even with the patch that kind of improved the matchmaking is still lacking is still a mess and that's sad that's just really really sad uh, but uh, the the story of the game the 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 single player option I, I don't I, I don't I don't think I can say anything bad about it it's incredible from beginning to end uh, so yeah so as you see me doing here uh, the trick about this fight is initially uh, casting uh, uh, always casting Gwen but I'm not really focusing on Gwen so much I'm really focusing on Igni even I, I don't have it uh, that uh, level up but it's, it, it's really the weakness of this uh, of these uh, dogs from the well hunt so it sometimes set, sets them on fire and that's uh, an enemy that's going to be stunned as you can see this this final part is really troublesome it's only troublesome because you are inside the bubble and because they hit really hard I mean I, I, I died many times in this last bubble alone because a lot of dogs are attacking me at the same time and as you see, and I'm no longer casting Gwen, I'm just trying to do crowd control with uh, Igni and more dogs are coming out and you, you're gonna see how close I am I to dying see, the, both of the dogs got on fire, that's really good now I'm going to start casting Gwen again because uh, I really want to get through this part but you see, they, they just when you the the thing with these dogs is that they hit you when you're going to hit them. So they're they they're really tricky. And I almost got uh, uh, frozen uh, in outside a bubble again. And I survived that. Look at that! Look at that health! Look at this! Oh my fucking god! Look at how close this came. It was really hard. So that was really close. Uh, really fun too. I mean, I, I I was expecting a challenge, but this is really challenging, and it's really fun. And this last battle, because I'm going to do the boss in a different video, as I said, uh, this last battle is against. Uh, Oh, I don't remember the name of the monster. It's the monster that is this kind of in a fog form. You're gonna see it right here. This is a separate part because, but because I did this and I I fought this monster, I'm just going to show it.
because that's the way. The Foglet, is that how is this monster's name? Foglet, I think. So, something like that. So, yeah. Look at how much a fucking guy takes off my health. Jesus Christ, and I'm and it may, I, I'm even limited to how much alcohol I have, so at this point I had just enough to to fight in, uh, Nithril with only three swallows and three thunderbolts. So I really have to start uh, buying more alcohol. I, I can run out of alcohol in the middle of a quest. It could be a fucking disaster. Uh, this is the this is the final battle with the foglet. This was chapter two, and I'll see you in the second part of chapter two, which be which will be uh, only the neutral boss. So thank you guys for watching, and take care.